Welcome to episode 32 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. This episode is going to be my fabulous episode where I portray a an American shadow government of a shadow president Hillary Clinton a shadow president running in parallel with a uh, Donald Trump so let's explore that uh, if you need to know what the definition of fabulous is Alexa what is the definition of the word fabulous Fabulous is usually defined as a person who invents or relates fables. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for fabulous. Give me more definitions of fabulous. I have one more definition for the noun. Fabulous. A liar. <laughs> Perfect. Come right back after the ad. Talk to you soon. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast, episode 32 on November 1st, Sunday. This is going to be my fabulous liar, imagineer episode where I uh, posit crazy conspiracy theories that I think would be awesome if they were true and are probably completely true because of the way um, uh, all of my women friends reacted upon the loss of Hillary Clinton and how Hillary and her posse really disappeared into the background. And uh, I posit that uh, she and her entire administration uh, exist and are very aggressive and uh, defiant and active as a shadow government as a shadow presidency, as a shadow administration, shadow president Hillary Clinton, Hillary Rodham Clinton. And uh, and that's what I posit. Uh, I come to that for many reasons. First of all, it's been amazing how extremely well harnessed uh, the bureaucracy is and how well organized the bureaucracy is during the Trump campaign and then during the Trump admin first first term in office. Um, the uh, the people who have been disrupting the Trump uh, White House have been aggressive. They've been very high in the administration. They've been very high in the State Department. They've been very high in the intelligence community, including, and, and they've been very high in the Department of Defense. Uh, only, the only kind of access that would be viable in terms of, a, of an active defiance, an active resistance, a shadow government, and I'm not talking a shadowy government, I'm not talking about men in black and reptilian queens. I'm not talking about an over-government, an overarching globalism. I'm just talking about a, um, uh, a, a presidency in parallel, an active, active with orders and with strategy and tactics and with a vision for tomorrow uh, being run as though elected into office and living in the White House, uh, the administration of Hillary Clinton. And this would be very much uh, similar to what's happening in Venezuela or what is happening in, um, in Syria, right? There's Assad, and Assad is the uh, official is the, is the official president of Syria. But then there's a shadow government, which the United States endorses. And um, then there's, hey, Google, who's the, who's the president of Venezuela? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. 
the President of Venezuela, officially known as the President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, is the head of state and head of government in Venezuela. The President leads the national executive of the Venezuelan government and is Alexis, the commander chief of the National Bolivarian Army. Hey, Armed Google, Forces. stop. Who is the current President of Venezuela? Alexa, who's the current President of Venezuela? Nicolás Maduro was re-elected President of Venezuela in May 2018. But according to the Organization of American States, the current interim president of Venezuela is Juan Guaido. By the way, I noticed you haven't asked me to play music in a while. Remember, you can just say, play top hits. No, thank you. So, so there's Maduro and then there's Guaido, right? Uh, Alexa. Alexa. Who's the current president of Syria? The president of Syria is Bashar al-Assad. So, each of these two countries, they have uh, their proper, quote, dictators, the proper nationalists who are considered by, I guess, their people or by um, other countries as being... Uh, the official acknowledged holder of the title who uh, lives in the presidential palace or whatnot and who uh, makes decrees and has them followed out by the military, by the government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when it, back in 2000, back in 2000, um, I was supporting Gore, right, in the Gore v. Bush thing the fiasco and uh and so i was part of this thing uh nico mele uh invited me to work with him and uh ariana huffington on this thing called the shadow convention and it happened you know in june july or something like that of 2000 and it was uh in support of uh it was a counter messaging um uh, shadow convention that uh that shadowed the convention that was happening uh by the conservatives and republicans and it would talk about um f- fairness and ethics and and social programs and medic uh medicine and and healthcare etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. and it was it was meant to be actively counter messaging but also um defiant and and counter and, and and disruptive um and the moment i remember someone saying on facebook or 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 somewhere uh that the moment trump finally hit the white house and it was guaranteed that hillary was not going to be president of the United States in 2016, um, the entire campaign went dark. The entire, the entire campaign, uh, completely submerged, very similar, you know, to a nuclear sub in the North Atlantic. Um, I mean, there's been a couple, uh, f- funny and cheeky interviews with Hillary and Chelsea. And of course, you know, um, Bill has been all over the place. But there's nobody in the world who has better connections, uh, better power uh, connections than than Hillary and Bill. You know, Bill from being president and Hillary from being an essential part of the Obama uh, administration in in the State Department. And and so that's what I'm going to posit. That's the reason why uh, the resistance movement ever since uh, Trump, became was sworn in in january uh, the the reason why he's been dealing with nothing but complete and utter obstructions in my fabulous lie is that um hillary has hillary has an entire team an entire administration of of strategists of actors of um of politicians and of, of people who are deeply embedded and, and working on, um, on her behalf as opposed to on the behalf of, of, uh, of, 
of Donald, uh, Donald J. Trump. My friend Mark uh, fancies that, uh, that Trump is a plant. And Trump is completely a New York, uh, New York uh, elite, maybe a little bit lowbrow, but a a complete liberal elite, uh, New York City, uh, socially liberal, socially socially um, fiscally conservative, socially liberal New Yorker, just like any New Yorker, and that he's been uh, he's been playing a part. And and as I've told you before, I I feel and and think very strongly that the part that uh, that Donald Trump has been playing is the part of the, um, the, the WWE, WWF, the heel, right? Hey Google, what is a wrestling heel? According to Wikipedia, in professional wrestling, a heel is a wrestler who portrays a villain or a bad guy and acts as an antagonist to the faces who are the heroic protagonist or good guy characters. Alexa, what's the definition of a wrestling heel? Here's something I found on the web. According to Goliath.com, it's fake, predetermined, choreographed, scripted, and presented as if it were real. Hey, Google, what's the definition of a wrestling That's not face? A name I can respond to. According to Wikipedia, in professional wrestling, a face is a heroic or a good guy wrestler booked by the promotion with the aim of being cheered by fans. Traditionally, they wrestle within the rules and avoid cheating while behaving positively towards the referee and the audience. Oh my God, those definitions are even better than than I could have expected. Oh my God, I'm 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 uh, I'm a little verklempt right now. Um, yeah. So either way, it's uh, it's it's amazing, uh, interesting, considering uh, imagining that uh, that Hillary is in a bunker somewhere, actively sending um, cables, if you will, to people in the CIA and in the uh, in the FBI and in the Department of State, and sending cables, if you will, to uh, diplomats around the world. Uh, diplomats in Ukraine sending double secret cables from her uh, uh, unsecured web server, mail server to people in the State Department and people in the in the uh, various and sundry other uh, government areas sending in spies into the White House. It's all so sexy. Um, I think that you know uh, part of the pussy uh, pussy hat uh, women's march uh, was organizational. I think that there's all kinds of communications uh, that I can't be a part of uh, through people who are, are deeply vetted. Um, a lot of my friends from Renaissance Weekend probably. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Um, and I'm just making all this up. I just think it's a very fun thought experiment to believe that uh, that instead of um, instead of just uh, taking spirited walks and hikes through the woods like Hillary Clinton has been purported and reported of doing, um, she was in fact sitting at a giant round table, not unlike uh, the table uh, the strategy war room that was uh, in Dr. Strangelove uh, underneath some amazing giant boards, uh, giant, uh, giant, huge, giant televisions with, uh, with current, um, you know, current subversive, uh, a list of, a, a task list, a, a shopping list of subversions uh, to be perpetrated against the, the, the Trump White House and against Donald Trump and his uh, his uh, his his legions of deplorables, including uh, including Black Lives Matter, including uh, not my president, including um, of course 
uh, what was the one? Oh, um, uh, well, anyway, I think I'm running out of, I think I'm running out of clever insight into this. I just, uh, there's just no way, uh, that the chore, the choreography, uh, and the persistence and co consistency and the holding on to strategies that, uh, are very much just mere strategies that, uh, have been used before, such as the constant reiteration, uh, that, uh, that, that Trump is in Putin's pocket, the constant repetition, uh, almost, almost, almost Republican in nature, um, even baseless after being debunked over and over and over that Russia is behind everything. Russia's behind, you know, and, and it, it would take a cold warrior like Hillary Clinton to realize that, uh, very deep down, even after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989, there's a real suspicion about uh, the, the the true nature of what uh, Russia is and what Russia aspires to be. And, uh, and you can always get away with ginning up people based on whether or not uh, a former KGB officer has an interest in undermining uh, American norms and values and mores. And um, even further, one might argue that this is a long game uh, vengeance, revenge against the collapse of the Soviet Union in the first place, and that it's taken this long to build up the international strength and the international uh, wealth in the end to get Russia back on its feet well enough to to enact the kind of vengeance uh, against um, the United States that Russia has been feeling um, that would, you know, in many ways set the pH balance back into into normality. To say nothing of the constant and unending um, political and financial uh, restrictions that are uh, that have been put uh, against that have been that have been leveraged against this uh, Russia for the last you know twenty years, thirty years um, against their against their billionaires against their uh, businessmen, and all based on on who knows if these corruption charges are true? Who knows whether this is just uh, manipulation in in much the same way that. Uh, decades after Cuba was a real threat to America, we've insisted on on putting blockades up against Venezuela and and Cuba, right? Just old, just multi generational tribal stuff, um, not knowing how to act any other way. Anyway, uh, we'll go to a second. A second uh, commercial break, and then we'll close out. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to this silly brainstorm. Welcome back, episode 32, Chris Cast. Um, my, my cockamamie theory that Hillary Clinton is, uh, is, actively, um, is actively in a role that she and her minions and her posse uh, consider to be a, uh, uh, if you will, a shadow presidency in a shadow government with shadow influence and uh, as a, a, a direct intervention, a, if you will, uh, constant, constant undermining um, of the, of the Trump White House, of the, of Trump orders, of Trump, uh, if you will, a, um, she is acting like a very, very unhappy, very dissatisfied union uh, organizer. 
and uh, she has the power within the larger corporation of sneaking around and throwing uh, wrenches into into uh, the machines of government and uh, and holding slowdowns and sit down strikes and all these other uh, types of uh, of subversive and disruptive uh, behaviors that have then uh, and oh my god we haven't even talked about mainstream media wow that's too controversial if i start talking about how much liberal bias that uh that mainstream media has uh from you know the washington post to the new york times i mean it's just the atlantic always has so is the new yorker um but uh That'll just lose me credibility. And I don't mean this to be anything more than just uh, the rantings of a, of a liar and a madman. Intentionally fabulous. So that, and, and maybe a little fabulous, so that you guys can uh, machinate on this theory with me and we can bring it to the fore. Uh, since there's only... Uh, Two more days, one more day, two more days until the election, and we find out what happens. Uh, if I put my money down, it would be Trump's going to win again, because you can't assume what's going to happen in student government if the 80% of your dumb school decides to participate. You don't get what you want in student government if um, most of the time, Nobody cares about student government, but if you can get everybody all, all liquored up, if you can get everybody ginned up about it, you'll be surprised um, how how unenlightened, uninspired, unprogressive, how stoic, and like I said in yesterday's, um, in well in today, but yesterday's podcast uh we we americans are very proud you know very proud of our nationalism we're proud of our populism we're not ashamed of these things um we're proud of our wild wild west we're rugged into our narrative defines ourselves as rugged individualists we we like the idea of guns. We love Renaissance weekends. We love going to really like, think about how stupid Disneyland and Disney world and Orlando and everything else is. I mean, I know all y'all love those places, but just think how stupid Las Vegas is and how stupid Disney world is and how stupid Disneyland is and how stupid um, six flags are the, the six flags are and how how dumb uh all these things are you know they're just stupid they're not enlightened they're not they're just fun right they're they're there's a frontierism uh that americans pursue whether or not we have the uh wiry tenacity of our of our frontiersmen, uh, we might be soft and fat and close to death, and our guns might be sitting on our bubble bellies, and we might not be able to even walk upstairs, and we can barely uh, climb up into our F-350, but by God, we, um, we, we love that stuff, right? We do not... We do not hearken towards a better world. We hearken back to a simpler time. It's just antithetical for us to even think that we want, I mean, in a real way, to even think that we want jetpacks or that we want uh, freeze-dried uh, future food or, or flying cars or any of that. I mean... I think we don't want anything close to a Green New Deal. We don't want any restrictions on our ability to buy used cars and 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 drive our beaters and and get that hallowed black 
uh, um, license plate that says that, you know, my, my car is vintage and that I have a car that's over 25 or 30 years old and that it's still, my Model A is still running and I don't have to take it off the road. I can drive my Model A around town and it can go boom, you know, book, book, a 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 and create a big poof of, of, of smoke. And I, and I don't, I'm not, I could buy a car for $1,500 and don't have to leverage my life buying a plug-in vehicle and then what about people in what about people in in uh in apartment buildings right what about the thirty thousand dollar premium that electric vehicles cost when i could get a a car for fifteen hundred dollars off of facebook if i want one or my dreams are all about old 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 uh motorcycles that have the if you will, the octopus snorkel taken off. You know, people in Virginia can still cut out their catalytic converter and still get their cars past uh, uh, past uh, um, um, the uh, uh, through the what is it safety checks, right? Nobody wants nobody wants they want their diesel uh, they want their diesel Chevrolets they want their Cummins man. They want their Cummins diesels and they want their, you know, they want their 12 bangers and eight bangers. They want their V8s. They want their, their Harleys. They don't want their EVs, man. Um, and that's just cars. That has nothing to do with, uh, with, um, uh, I bet you in the future, uh, fireplaces aren't cool, right? Fireplaces can't be cool. I mean, you can smell a fireplace in a neighborhood. Right, if you're if you're burning logs and stuff, that can't be good for the environment. Burning trees in a in a box in your house that go out a chimney, man, that can't be good. Winter time's coming. That can't be good for the environment. The future's gotta be that can't be a flu. You can't F L U E. There can't be frickin' fireplaces. You certainly can't have coal-fired stoves. You can't have pot-bellied stoves. What are you going to do, man? We don't want to do that. We want to live. We want to live in the in the 19th century, brother. We want to live in the 19th century and then have access to smartphones and the internet. That's what we want, brother. That's what we want, says the fantabulous, the fabulous, fabulous, the liar. Anyway, let's see what happens when I come back after this. Maybe this will be the end. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, episode 32, Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. If you enjoyed this, thumbs up, give me good reviews. Come visit me, chrisabraham.com. Talk to me at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Chris Abraham, I'm at YouTube, youtube.com slash Chris Abraham, I'm at facebook.com slash Chris Abraham, I'm at instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, you can email me at chris at abraham.su, you can uh, text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. you can try to call that number, but I won't answer unless we have a play date sketch, a play date scheduled, um, that's it. I don't know what I forgot. Uh, hopefully this m amused you or made you think. Um, I still think Trump's going to have two terms, but I would love to be proved wrong. I would love it, love it, love it. And uh, I'll talk to you the next time. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.